So having used the majority of new legendaries from the Revenge of the Cartels event and the new exclusive Mayhem 6 Plus variants, today I bring you what in my opinion are the ones you should be seeking out. These are my top 5 best. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and today I bring you another BR3 video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like really helps me out and subscribe if you do want to see more. Okay, so in total weapon wise, I believe there are 15 new on offer which come from the Revenge of the Cartels event and the Mayhem 6 Plus exclusive variants. Today I bring you my top 5 best. Now obviously opinions will differ, this is just my opinion. So instead of going crazy at me for not mentioning your favourite new legendary, instead leave a comment telling me why I missed a treat, with that said, weapon and why you think I overlooked it. I mean there's no shame on my behalf giving a weapon a second look. Ok so getting into my top 5 new best legendaries. And in at number 5 we have nothing other than the fish slap grenade. Now this fish slap grenade I understand for some people out there isn't really the kind of thing they'd be looking for as it for the most part can't help your build out unless it's based on this grenade or something close to it, that being melee damage. I say this because no matter the random prefixes that can come on this grenade, its main purpose and part of trick is the fact this grenade's damage is melee damage. So let's say for instance you have a shield with that ruined prefix on, 80% melee damage while shields are depleted, while well, that works with this grenade. If you have a shield like this one with 2 times that ruined prefix on, well that adds damage to this grenade, 180% over standard damage, which you can see on screen now. You can also, as I'm sure you know, get additional melee damage from other sources including level 57 class mods giving you an additional 50 plus percent melee damage. Again, that adds damage to this grenade. But it doesn't end there guys, because this grenade and its hits actually counts as melee damage. It also triggers perks on anything you have, which we usually see a melee on an enemy is needed. For instance, let's say you're using this artifact right here, or a variant of it, the planetoid. Deal 75% bonus elemental damage whenever you melee an enemy. Elemental type changes every 5 seconds. Well this comes into play with this grenade too, check this out. As you can see with the random damage numbers popping off dealing other elemental damage, which is pretty cool. This one right here, slides build up a static charge causing your next melee attack to do 50% bonus shock damage. That also change to nearby enemies, but also guys, melee attacks replenish ammo. Check this out in action. Or even ones like this that add a certain element to your melee attacks too, these work wonders also. So yeah, it's why I've added it to my top 5, I mean this grenade without taking advantage of its actual purposes isn't anywhere near the best grenade in the game, but using it to its fullest potential and you could create something we ain't seen before. Whether you create a grenade build around this or whether it helps out with your melee build, and to be honest that's why it's here, because of just how unique it is. Now the fish slap is a grenade exclusive to the Revenge of the Cartels event and drops upon the Villa Ultraviolet from fish slap himself, which is kind of obvious, but people are also reporting it dropped from Tyrone Smollins too. So you know where to get this thing people if it does appeal to you. Ok so we're going to move on, and in at number 4 is a new doll SMG, the Kaosin. Now the Kaosin is a new exclusive SMG to Mayhem 6 and above, and it drops from Captain Tron to Panathenus and comes offering all elements. It can also drop in a variety of different variants too, some with bigger magazine size but less damage and vice versa. And also being able to switch between any two modes of full auto, semi auto and burst fire. Its party trick is its projectile stick and then later explode, no matter where you hit that enemy. Body, head, doesn't matter. Now upon my testings of this it seriously surprised me. Little did I think it would be quite the monster it actually is. Those sticky projectiles which later explode make this weapon, as each one adds 100% additional bonus damage over the initial shot, and because there is a slight delay upon you landing those shots, it feels like you are still shooting and dealing damage even when you are reloading it because those damage numbers are still popping off. Now SMGs for the most part ain't really on that damage scale in terms of possible DPS caused. Yes there are the odd few in the game which are up there but for the most part there are just other things on offer better than SMGs for DPS. I mean the redistributor is great if ads are close together, I mean it can't be beat in that instance. The cutspan's an absolute monster which we all know about, but there ain't many other SMGs which I can think of off the top of my head which really stand out. 
without a crazy build behind them boosting that damage. This one though is definitely up there and it's also thanks to its crazy fire rate. And because it's a very accurate gun, laying down that damage is easy too. It's one letdown though is its mag size, with the more powerful variants having a reduced mag size. This can be compensated elsewhere though, and certain Vault Hunters can compensate this much better than others. Me playing on Zane it isn't that simple, and it, to be honest guys it's why I haven't put the Sanderhawk here, I mean I main Zane. Yes the Sanderhawk is a stupid powerful sniper, but it just shreds through its ammo way too quick. And I mean I know it isn't a problem for some, but Zane mains out there I'm sure you would agree, it just isn't as efficient as other snipers in the game, as we just have no way of getting back that ammo quick enough to lay down a constant damage output. But enough with the Sandhawk, it's about the kills in here, and this little grey SMG I feel should be recognised a little more, and it's why it's at my number 4 spot. Ok so moving on, and in at number 3 we have the Monarch Assault Rifle. Now the Monarch is a Valadar Assault Rifle which looks a lot like the Dictator, its older brother but in my opinion it's better in almost every single way. Firstly this Monarch is an exclusive drop on Mayhem 6 or above to Killivolt who can be located upon Electricity and it can drop offering all elements too, as well as no element. It comes as far as I'm aware in a 4x variant and an 8x variant, the 8x variants though do I believe swallow 2 ammo per shot. So this Monarch like I said is a lot like the Dictator. Having 2 firing modes too, doubling up on the number of projectiles being shot but its second firing mode, being at bipod mode, much like the Dictator, seriously reduces your mobility because while in this mode you can't run or jump. Now this Monarch comparing it to the Dictator, it fires its pellets in a much better and tighter way, making it way more easier to lay down that damage on a single target. It also comes with better variants too, instead of a 3x and a 6x, with the Dictator we get a 4x and an 8x with the Monarch. It's also just a way more powerful weapon and because its pellet spread is way easier to control and land that damage on that enemy, it makes for a much much better weapon than the Dictator and an overall superb assault rifle, as in many instances this game throws at you, for the most part it can't be touched. Now upon my first test in this I went into the Salota Shaft upon Mayhem 10 and I just tore through absolutely everything. It's also great at mounting bosses and taking all this into account, it should really have one letdown and it does and that is just the fact of how quick this thing consumes its ammo. But if you can sort that problem out, which isn't that hard, we have a top tier assault rifle here people, one I do recommend you at least checking out and trying. Ok so moving on, and in at number 2 we have the yellow cake launcher, and man oh man this thing is utterly crazy. So this yellow cake is a weapon that drops offering only that radiation damage, and is an exclusive drop up on the Villa Ultraviolet and drops from Fish Lap and Tyrone Smullins. Now upon my first getting this, I had a variant that dropped off in 42k damage, and that thing alone mounted through everything I shot at on main 10. After making a video on it showcasing it to the world, I was then contacted by a dude on my discord, which guys if you ain't a part of already you should definitely join and check out, I have a great Borderlands community full of people who love trading and so much more, linked in the video description if you do want to join. But this guy messaged me stating he had a 2 times variant, so 42k damage times 2, I mean yes it does consume 2 ammo per shot, but who cares, it eats enemies for breakfast. So credit to Rupee Collector 3 for this version. But it got better people because I was then sent this one right here, which is even more powerful, dealing 44k damage times 2, anointments obviously just making this thing even more brutal. And credit goes to Biff EFC for life for this one, absolutely monster of a weapon. So what we have here guys, is possibly the most powerful weapon in the game right now, easily scoring millions in damage numbers where bills ain't even added, add those bills into the equation and what you have yourself is something special here. This thing fires a giant oozing projectile that splits into two and again splitting into a further two making four projectiles in total, all capable of devastating damage. So yes, if you are yet to get this yellow cake, do it before the Revenge of the Cartels event ends. Ok so moving on, and lastly my favourite and in my opinion the best weapon to come out of the Revenge of the Cartels event and Mayhem 6 plus legendaries is nothing other than the OPQ system. Now the OPQ system for those that don't know is basically a bigger and better version of his older brother the Q system, which before this was probably the best assault rifle in the game. Now that though being an epic variant, a legendary version had to be so much better, and it is. To be honest I kind of feel sorry for the Q system now because that's going to be forgotten about and it helped me through a lot of hard times. 
but the old PQ system is here and well it's an utter monster. And I say this because of what this thing can do. We see on paper that this monster can drop on Mayhem 10 at a close to 10k damage times 2 per shot per single ammo consumed. So that there let's just say 20k a shot. From an assault rifle that's crazy. Add builds and things on top of this and well yeah but it actually doesn't end there with this weapon because it has many tricks. For one it seems every second or third shot percentage wise fires a shock projectile dealing about 50% of that initial damage. And no this doesn't take away any extra ammo and yes you still get that standard shot at the same time as when shot comes into play. So this assault rifle is just on another level to anything this game offers. I mean the monarch is a beast let's not get that twisted but this just blows it out of water. But this thing also has another party trick and that is the fact it has a second firing mode in which you fire out a version of this weapon which follows you around and shoots at those enemies. And I mean even though this is a great addition to the weapon it isn't needed, the weapon would still be top of this list if this wasn't an option. I will say though it's OPQ system mode is a lot of fun on moles as you can spawn in loads of these at the same time. All you need is the sum for the road perk selected. Moles gains infinite ammo for a few seconds after exiting Iron Bear. Effect lasts 5 seconds. This means if you put the OPQ system into the OPQ system mode before getting into the Iron Bear, when you jump out you can just spam that trigger and it will spawn in tons of this weapon which is a fun addition for Moles players. But yeah guys the OPQ system is an absolute must get before this event ends. Get as many variants as you can with all the anointments you think might be viable in the future because once the Revenge of the Cartels event does end, so indeed does your chances in getting this thing. And that is that. So guys, those were my top 5 new legendaries which come from the Revenge of the Cartels event and the additions with Mayhem 6 Plus. Do what you gotta do to get any which appeal to you. And on that note, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video or upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.